At Open Democracy, we've been investigating the state of freedom of information in the UK and have found that central government departments are less likely to grant an FOI uh, request in full and the appeals process is just getting longer and longer. And uh, last year we published um, a report uh, by Lucas Amin, The Art of Darkness, which paints uh, an incredibly worrying picture of the state of FOI and the obstacles that uh, journalists and, and campaigners and researchers uh, face when trying to access information under the FOI legislation. Um, but uh, during our investigation, um, we uh, discovered something called the uh, Clearinghouse, which is uh, a unit uh, operated by um, a very central government department called the Cabinet Office. And what happens is when uh, government departments and agencies uh, receive a sensitive uh, request or a, a round robin uh, request, those get flagged uh, to the uh, Clearinghouse. And the, what we also discovered was that the Clearinghouse also circulates a list of requests, uh, mainly originating from journalists and uh, campaigners across, uh, across other government departments, um, which also contains advice on, from the Cabinet Office on how other government departments should be responding to such requests. So uh, it all started back, back in uh, August 2018, following a tip-off. I submitted a freedom of information request uh, to get hold of documents about the clearinghouse, mainly the list of requests that they circulate and the advice given. And I used what do they know pro uh, to, to, to manage my, my freedom of information request. Um, and unfortunately, my freedom of information request was rejected and I had to go all the way to the courts. So that was earlier this year. So three years in the making. And we managed to get hold of the documents that we was after. Um, Prior to, oops, um, prior to um, uh, our investigation about this, this clearinghouse, there was, there was nothing on the official uh, government website to explain to the requester what this process is, which to me is highly concerning. Um, and it was only when we actually went to the courts, uh, the Cabinet Office published more information about its processes, uh, literally a couple of weeks before I, uh, it, the hearing, uh, including a list of sort of triggers uh, for when requests, sensitive requests, uh, should be uh, forwarded to this, this clearinghouse. Um, but earlier this year, uh, thankfully, the judge ruled in our favour and uh, the judge uh, really slams the Cabinet Office for such lack of transparency. Um, now, why should you be, well, why should, you know, people be concerned about this clearinghouse in the UK? Why should requesters be so concerned? Well, there's actually what we've discovered, a lot of concerns. Um, uh, for context, the Cabinet Office has, you know, one of the worst FOI records in central government, uh, in, in central government. Um, and they really do tend to lead more towards withholding information rather than disclosing it. Uh, they do have a uh, tendency to be secretive. And, uh, I, it, and for the Cabinet Office to advise other government departments and agencies on how to respond to requests, uh, it doesn't quite sit well with me. And uh, the advice that has been released uh, is questionable. Um, the clearinghouse also um, asks uh, government departments to send them the uh, drafts of FOI uh, responses uh, before they're sent out to the requester. And it indicates a certain level of control um, on what can and cannot be uh, released to the public. Um, we also uh, know that it is contributing to um, uh, delays uh, experienced by FOI requesters. So we had one campaigner who has worked very, very hard on trying to access documents about the infected blood scandal, a huge scandal in the UK, uh, charting back from the 1980s. And uh, he uh, sent off a freedom of information request to one good government department that got forwarded to the clearinghouse and then we managed to get hold of internal documents where one can see the treasury interacting with the clearinghouse the clearinghouse is saying you know actively discouraging this uh, department not to release information but the treasury was saying yes we really do want to give this information and that whole process lasted for five months and we all know that well we know in the UK that you know uh, requests should be answered within 20 working days um and uh, very recently, actually last week, I believe, we found that the uh, clearinghouse was interfering with FOI requests uh, about an incredibly tragic uh, um, sort of the Grenfell uh, Tower fire tragedy that killed uh, 72 people. Um, we know that other journalists have uh, 
their request had been flagged to this, this clearinghouse, uh, a Times journalist saw that um, he managed to get hold of documents where it was found that his uh, Freedom of Information request had been flagged to this central this, this clearinghouse because he's a journalist. Um, and there was another journalist who found that the uh, clearinghouse was um, working to block the release of documents to journalists, um, even though uh, the Department for International Trade was very happy to release the information. So um, yes, our open, our open democracy investigation into the clearinghouse has had a huge uh, impact. Um, journalists, politicians across the, uh, the political spectrum, they've um, demanded an inquiry into this, this process. Um, and in the summer, we eventually did managed to spark parliamentary inquiry, which is really good news. It's, it's going to happen uh, later this year. Uh, they are currently um, uh, so, um, gathering up, accepting evidence, which I have uh, about to file tomorrow. Um, but uh, no, it's, and we also reported that the uh, cabinet office is conducting its own inquiry into the clearing house, which is quite funny considering how earlier this year they rubbished our reporting and uh, they said that we were ridiculous and tendentious. Um, so there we have it. Um, hopefully this parliamentary inquiry will lead to positive change in the way FOI requests are dealt with uh, in central government departments. Um, I know I've sped through those slides and um, yes, that's it. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Senna. That's uh, really, really interesting. And yeah, that that very, very quick tour does not do justice to, to the amount of wonderful work you guys are, are doing over there. We very much support it. Um, we have done our evidence as well for, for the uh, inquiry and I encourage anyone else in the UK uh, that, is, that is interested in this to, to look into that and submit their own evidence if they, uh, if they have any.